Hello and welcome to the symposium. And once again, I'm going to talk about children's cartoon. <laughs> but there is some relevance to uh, political philosophy that is brought up in Avatar The Last Airbend, uh, especially with the character of Azula. Now, I'm not going to catch you up on the plot of the thing. You'll have to know it in advance. Um, but at the end of the series, Azula is captured and then... In the, a series of comic books that I haven't read, so I'm just reading, uh, going by the Wikipedia um, summary of them, Wikipedia summary, the, the fandom summary of them, um, the the character of Azula is, is kept in a mental institution, uh, presumably permanently strapped up in some straitjacket. And and until she's required to find the, the Zuko and her mother, uh, Ursa, um, in a quest, but again, I haven't read it. But the question is really, what would you do with Azula? Because Azula is a remarkable character in many ways. Not only is she brilliant, she's incredibly well driven, she is dangerous, phenomenally dangerous. I mean, it was only on her worst day that Zuko could take her, and he required Katara to do it. So leaving her alive is a problem, and the other problem is she is also legitimate. She is the legitimate daughter of the Fire King, uh, the Fire Lord, and so through heredity, she has as much of a claim as Zuko does. There doesn't appear to be any kind of prescription in the Avatar universe about female rulers, as far as we can tell. Ozai wasn't hesitant to make her the new Fire Lord, so that didn't seem to matter. And the fact that she's brilliant and capable uh, meant that she seemed to be a good person for the job. The problem was that she didn't have uh, the right mindset. She didn't have the right frame of mind. She was loony. She went. Pa she became paranoid. She uh, betrayed by her best friends, which is something I left out of the other video. Thanks for pointing that out. I forgot about that. Uh, d d betray oh, and I, we say friends in a very loose way when we talk about Azula's relationships. But uh, May and Ty Lee are the closest thing they have to friends. And Azula, famous for controlling all of her relationships through fear, fails to calculate correctly uh, May's fear of Azula, which... Uh, is not as great as Azula thought it was, which uh, led to her downfall, uh, becoming paranoid and ending up ostracizing all of the people close to her, banishing them, as it were. So the the question is, what do we do? And a lot of people call Azula Machiavellian uh, because she is a manipulative, scheming, gaslighting, plotting, evil person. Uh, but Machiavelli, I think, has had something of a negative reputation and that's not really what he's saying to do uh, overall in his corpus of work this comes from one book that he wrote and he wrote many called the prince now machiavelli was a florentine diplomat in the 15th and i think was it early 16th century i think he did it but the it was definitely in the 15th century um he was a diplomat for florence florence was an independent city state in italy when it was a very 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 uh contested ground. You had incredible importance in Italy because of the Papal States, uh, the Pope. You had very, like, France and Germany vying for it. It's uh, uh, Spain, Spanish kingdoms vying for Italy. And then you had the desire of the Italian city-states for their own independence and power and prestige as well. And so it's very much like a real-life Game of Thrones, and it's hard to imagine why anyone wouldn't be manipulative, scheming, plotting, and tyrannical in, uh, but Machiavelli's not in favour of tyranny. Uh, in fact, he wrote extensively on republics against the idea of tyranny. He obviously prefers republics, but he is a realist. And it is from Machiavelli, he's like the grandfather of political science because of his realistic approach to the politics of his day. The Prince is not a nice book. It is an honest book. And what it is, is an honest accounting of princely politics. Uh, being a prince, being the, the, the autocratic ruler of a, a state, um, comes with certain, bag uh, certain baggage. I mean, it's, it's good if you are the prince or someone close to the prince who is, has the prince's trust and is used as an organ of state, but, uh, but if you're not, your political freedom is pretty limited. And <clears throat> the prince themselves is forced to do certain things that they probably wouldn't rather do, uh, but these things are done by necessity because of the political structure of a princely state. Uh, it's done through heredity 
and that's the source of legitimacy. Are you born into into the as a descendant of whoever the existing royal family is, or princely family, as should we say? Um, if you are, then you are legitimate, and if you're not, then you're not, and you have to legitimize yourself through, I don't know, conquest or whatever it is. You have to falsify your family lineage, whatever, to give yourself a claim on it. Um, Machiavelli wrote his book, The Prince, for uh, Lorenzo the Magnificent, um, a, a new prince who had come to power in Florence, uh, and he was effectively the de facto ruler of the Republic of Florence. Um, and he was attempting to ingratiate him into his good faith, into his good graces. Uh, but there is also an overarching goal that Machiavelli has that he presents at the end of the prince, I think it is. Uh, and it's an exhortation. The, the final part of the prince is the exhortation to free Italy from the barbarians. Because Machiavelli was fundamentally a patriot, and he wished for Florence to have its freedom, and he didn't believe it was going to have its freedom unless Italy was essentially united under a great ruler who understood how to rule. And that's why he wrote The Prince. It was a critique, and it's uh, not a critique, but it's an instruction manual on how princely politics works. And princely politics, which why we don't do it now, is not very nice. It's totally anti democratic. Um, but it's expressly guidelines about what to do, uh, a prince on how he can, in his contemporary time, uh, succeed. It doesn't give, it, give us many guidelines for what to do with Azula, though, believe it or not. Um, you would think that it would be useful to Zuko to, to know what to do with a defeated um, sibling who was essentially defeated in a civil war through single combat. Uh, which, <laughs> for some reason, he doesn't include. But we can make some deductions. I mean, in Chapter 4, uh, why the kingdom of Darius, conquered by Alexander, did not rebel against the successors of Alexander at his death, uh, he says this. He said, Once the Turk read the prince, but what, what they mean is essentially the emperor of um, the Ottoman Empire at the time it was. Uh, once the Turk has been conquered and he routed in the field in such a way that he cannot replace his armies, there is nothing to fear but the family of the prince, and this being exterminated, there remains no one to fear. Now, this is relevant because the, the Fire Kingdom, the, the Fire Nation, is a a hereditary principality. Um, the the children of the Fire Lord are become the new Fire Lords. Um, and so... It seems that Machiavelli would be suggesting that Azula needs to be put to death on the grounds that she is also a legitimate descendant of the Fire Lord. Uh, otherwise, she is always going to be a threat to Zuka. Now, this isn't just because she is incredibly powerful as an individual. I mean, that in itself is pretty much a good guarantee of why Azula shouldn't be left alive. Uh, she's not only powerful, she's also clever manipulative, scheming, and she is legitimate. And so from the princely view, uh, print the view of princely politics, she will always be a threat to Zuko. Anyone Zuko rubs the wrong way can always look to her as a patron. And it's hardly likely that, I mean, like you know, it, let's say Azula spends her 20s insane, but what if she ends up gaining some semblance of sanity by her 30s or something like this? She's still young. She's still able to, you know, carry on campaigns. She's still able to fight. Why would you allow her to be that threat in perpetuity? And again, anyone Zuko wrongs can look to her as a patron and support her. And this, again, is how princely politics works. And so, essentially, this makes for the nexus of a civil war. And is it likely that Azula is always going to play second fiddle to her inferior brother? Probably not. It's probably likely that at some point she's going to see herself as the rightful ruler and try to overthrow Zuko, which she's likely to do with like more, more chance than not, I would say, because Zuko just isn't her equal. And, I mean, I don't know whether all this happens in the Avatar mythos. I'm sure it doesn't. I'm sure they write it so it doesn't. But I don't think that's it's, it's reasonable to suggest that Azula isn't capable of all these things and would want to desire to do all these things. 
And it doesn't seem to be beyond the moral boundaries of the universe to discuss this question, which is something I find interesting. Uh, the, the world of Avatar is really brutal. It's really quite brutal. And the, 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 the amount of horror that actually occurs in the, in the story is genuinely quite extreme. I mean, the Air Nomads have already been exterminated by the time that the story starts. And Aang is the last one. And he goes and sees the result. You know, the skeleton in the Air Nation temple. The, the fact that there's no one there. They've all been killed. He firsthand witnesses the results of that. And then the Fire Nation attempts to do it to the Northern Water tribe. And then Ozai attempts to do it to the Earth Kingdom during Sozin's Comet. And Azula herself wanted to join the expedition to go and exterminate the Earth Kingdom. So it's not like she's not also just fine with genocide. In fact, she's upset when she's told by her father that she's not going to be coming on the mission to exterminate the Fire Kingdom. Uh, and <laughs> she's annoyed until she realizes she's going to be made uh, the Fire Lord and he's going to become an emperor. Um, so that's something that I think is well within the, the scope of Avatar The Last Airbender. And uh, the reason she isn't killed, presumably, is something along the lines of the reason that Fire Lord Ozai isn't killed by Aang at the end of Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, Aang has a problem with just taking human life. He, he's a vegetarian. He's a problem taking any life. You know, the monks taught him that all life was sacred. It is the sanctity of life that fuels his philosophy. And so he can't bring himself to kill Fire Lord Ozai, which is a, a double difficulty in the final conflict he has with him, because Fire Lord Ozai is, of course, a great fighter, um, but Aang is also conflicted by, what do I do if I beat him? Uh, he ends up taking his powers away using energy bending that he learns about from some giant turtle island thing. Um, but he, So he, he finds a resolution to this, and this is presumably the same philosophy that means that we can't just kill Azula. But Azula herself if she is as Machiavellian as is claimed, and I think, honestly, I'll probably do a second video on this, because I think that Fire Lord Azula would actually probably rule in a distinctly, uh, in, in a way that Machiavelli did not advise. Because, uh, again, Machiavelli, he wasn't about doing evil for evil's sake or anything like that. And so the term Machiavellian, it, it really does cast a negative light on the man, who I don't really think deserves it. I think, really, he was just smart and able to recognize what is and extrapolate from that, which was different from what most other um, um, authors of a genre called Speculum Principii, Principii, I think it is, or Mirrors for Princes. It was a genre of books, because Europe was covered in feudal principalities at the time. And so there was constantly young uh, noble men who were in need of instruction on how to get along in this kind of world. And most of them were from a very uh, Christian perspective. And so they were very much about what should rather than what should, what, rather than what is. And this, this was very, it, it was a kind of political correctness. And Machiavelli just came out and said, well, look, if you do these things, then you actually secure your power. And I can give you historical examples of these things having been done, and therefore, but uh, anyway, Azula herself probably wouldn't have made a very good Fire Lord uh, from Machiavelli's perspective. But importantly, Azula herself would certainly put Zuko to death. I really think that if the, the tables were turned, if she felt that Zuko was going to be a threat to her position, then she certainly would have dealt with him. And I think that in a real-world scenario where something similar has happened between Azula and Zuko, is essentially forced to kill Azula, because she is too dangerous to be left alive. Thank goodness we're just talking about a comic, eh? A cartoon, sorry.